So last night, Donald Trump went on Truth Social claiming that Joe Biden was trying to have him murdered during that classified documents raid on Mar-a-Lago. Um, it's just insane. But folks, the New Republic is reporting, and this is all over the place, Trump pushes nefarious lie after damning classified documents report. Donald Trump, it says, is falsely claiming that President Biden was prepared to kill him during the FBI's search for classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, a nefarious lie given that Trump wasn't even at the residence the day of the search. And keep in mind that the um, his Trump security, right, the Secret Service, they were notified of what the FBI was going to be doing. So this wasn't like some, calling it a raid is sort of, you know, it wasn't a raid per se because they all knew that it was going to be happening. And, and I think Donald Trump knew that it was going to be happening. That's why he wasn't there. In any event, the reporting says that in a true social post on Tuesday evening, the former president said that after his hush money trial adjourned for the day, he learned that crooked Joe Biden's DOJ and their illegal unconstitutional raid of Mar-a-Lago, also, no, also known as Bayou Larange, authorized the FBI to use deadly lethal force. And all of this is probably stemming from the fact that Donald Trump is probably trying to distract from the news on Tuesday from an unsealed legal opinion that classified documents were found in his bedroom at Mar-a-Lago four months after the FBI's initial search. We all know, and I think Donald Trump has said as much, that he likes having classified doc documents in his bedroom. Who knows why? Who knows? Does he look at them before he goes to bed? Is it is it like his teddy bear calming, you know? I don't know, but he likes to have these things there at Mar-a-Lago. As insane as it is. Well, folks, on Morning Joe, they walked uh, walked into this little maelstrom with Donald Trump. Evidently, and I didn't see this yesterday, but he left the courtroom, the hush money trial courtroom, and he was complaining about Juan Mershon, more like attacking Judge Juan Mershon, and he said something like, look at where he comes from, of all things. So he's pulling that card out like he's not American, folks. Here's how that went. Judge, he's Donald Trump. Just take a look. Take a look at him. Take a look at where he comes from. Oh, my he God. He stand Donald Trump. He's doing everything in his power. Sam, what's he talking about? I mean, this is typical Trump, right? This is the same exact or version of the line he did back in the 2016 campaign where he said the judge against him uh, in the Trump University case was biased because mm -hmm. he was from Mexico. Uh, so it, it is a lot like that. So anytime Donald Trump finds himself in a courtroom, which is quite frequently these days, like in the Trump University trial where that judge, judge was from Mexico, he, he made a point of that. And he's doing the same thing here. He's making a point of where Judge... Juan Mershon is from. And folks, if you take a look at it, um, Judge Juan Mershon was born in Bogota, Colombia. He emigrated to New York City when he was six years old, growing up in Jackson Heights, Queens, as the youngest of six children. His father had been a military officer in Colombia. Mershon studied business at Brook College in Manhattan, graduating in 1990, earned his Juris Doctor from Hofstra University School of Law in Long Island in 1994. He was the first family member in his family to go to college. So that sounds like something that should be celebrated. That's that's really something that you should celebrate. This is someone who came over. We're all immigrants from some time frame or, or whatever. This is something that should be celebrated. He came over, he went to college. I mean, this is this is a story of someone who answered the American dream. You know, he he came over and found a better life. I mean, this isn't don't look at him and say, my God, he's less than American because, you know, he's he's from Bogota. This is a success story, folks. This is what America is all about. And Donald Trump is using that to say, basically, wink, nudge, you know, he's not American. It's insane. But then they went on to this, folks. So remember yesterday, Donald Trump disparaged the use of contraceptives. And I think he sort of... Uh, said the quiet part out loud where this is where if he's elected he's going to be going with his administration they're going to be restricting contraceptives on top of what they've already done to roe versus wade so this is how it went on morning joe folks listen to this 
Let's move to Louisiana. The House approved a bill yesterday, this is why Mitch is here, that classifies two drugs used to induce abortion as controlled dangerous substances. Meanwhile, former President Trump said in an interview that he is, quote, looking at supporting restrictions on a person's right to contraception. NBC News senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson has the latest. A new front line this morning in the battle over abortion access. And the bill is finally passed. Louisiana lawmakers moving forward with a plan to put two abortion drugs in the same category as so-called controlled dangerous substances like depressants and stimulants, criminalizing the possession of mifepristone and misoprostol used to induce abortions for anyone without a prescription. When overutilized, this drug. Since the overturning of Roe versus Wade, more than a dozen states have put in place stricter abortion laws, raising the political stakes on reproductive rights heading into November. For so, so, folks, this is just one of many. It's a, it's movements that Donald Trump has made, um, and it's supported by the states. And, and Donald Trump sort of hinted at that yesterday when he was talking about we'll have to let the states, you know, so have to let the states decide you know what they're going to do and the states will do it if they can do it a good example of this is what louisiana is doing and it's a slow motion alignment of of donald trump towards the radical conservative nature of doing things they went after roe v wade they're going to go after contraceptives and then next they're going to go after marriage equality and you know if you if you don't think that they're hell-bent on on marriage equality and and even lgbt people just look at what's going on in florida right now governor ron DeSantis came out and said that there shall be no colors shown on bridges other than red white and blue thereby meaning that there shall be no pride month celebration in the state of florida so it's this it's this watering down it's this slowly pulling rights away from americans making them feel less than american it's the whole slow motion walk folks in this direction is what scares me but the next person that they had on was john uh Prado, and he is with the economist he's an editor with the economist and the question was what kind of restraints are on the presidency folks and have a listen to how this went but john in terms of restraints upon the presidency or restraints upon a candidate running for president who happened to have sat in the oval office for four years uh, what would restraints or what would what would the restraints do to someone who, for instance, just yesterday, Donald Trump just yesterday more than suggested that the Department of Justice under President Biden had authorized use of lethal force to maybe take a shot at Donald Trump, maybe try an assassination attempt on Donald on Donald Trump. What do we do about a candidate like that? What kind of restraints would work against someone clearly not within the bounds of any restraint well so then i think we you have to look back at what he did when he was in office and again this is the question that journalists like me tied ourselves up in knots trying to trying to figure out i mean look back at some of the memoirs that people who served in his cabinet you know mark esper writes in his memoir about donald trump asking if it was possible for him to give an order to shoot people in the leg shoot protesters in the leg in shoot protesters in the legs um i mean that's that's absolutely unheard of folks can you imagine if he had done that and, and the only reason why he didn't do it was because mark esper at the time told him that he couldn't and mark Esper's not going to be there in trump's second term nor will a lot of the other people that were restraining donald trump in 2020 and he was told no no you can't do that and then we get into a question of well how how serious was that you know is that a thing he really would have done or yeah. is it like the remarks you guys were talking about earlier on contraception where he says a thing and it's not quite clear you know how serious he is so in terms of restraints and, and it, um, I, I think those norms around the American military are hugely important. I mean, I spoke to a bunch of people who, who served in pretty senior positions in uh, the Trump administration, and, and they pointed out to me that the, you know, one of them said the DOD is not in a rush to operate against American citizens. So those kind of checks are really important. But I think the striking thing is if you look through the Constitution, look through the law, it's a lot of those things that aren't written down, norms around mm -hmm. DOJ independence, norms around 
how the military would behave in time of crisis. Those are the things that are the real guarantees rather than the stuff that's written down. I think if you ask most Americans what they're taught in the civics class, it would be, well, the Constitution is the guarantee. Um, and I'm not sure that, that I think that might be a bit too comforting in, in the case like that. And so, folks, the, the whole thing about this, <clears throat> I can't help but, but say this, that if Donald Trump were to become president for a second term, we would just be left with a lot of norms, right, that would be expected to restrain Donald Trump. I mean, we're, we're relying on norms in, in a second presidency. I mean, the man has already asked, um, what was it, the Secretary of Defense, if he could shoot protesters in the legs. What would happen if Donald Trump wanted to do something like that in his second term and was given the green light and the military said, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, you've got the basic groundwork there for a coup in the United States of America if Donald Trump were to become president. The, the military, let's hope, when we're talking about norms, would not do that to Americans. So, they simply just, do you think they would just say, no, we can't do that? Or depending on what the order was and the amount of pressure that they were getting, they might actually have to step in and and subdue or um, control um, what the president was trying to do. I mean, it's it's the groundwork for a coup, basically, in my opinion, if Donald Trump were to try something like that again in a second presidency. Best case, folks, I, obviously, is not to elect Donald Trump. Just to let him play golf at Bayou LaRange and be done with it.